What happens to your metabolism when you lose weight? Metabolic adaptation, otherwise known as adaptive thermogenesis, is one of the most misunderstood, misused, and abused concepts of the fitness industry. <coughs> Starvation mode. <clears throat> Let me break this down for you so you understand why this topic is confusing, but more importantly, so you become immune to the hordes of people misrepresenting research often just to sell you something. Quick foundation lesson, think of your metabolism as the sum of all processes in your body. It's the total amount of energy you burn per day. The fancy term for that is total daily energy expenditure. Every single calorie you burn falls into one of these components. Your basal metabolic rate refers to the amount of energy you burn when you're resting. If you are asleep in a dark room, perfectly still with no food in your stomach, your body is still burning energy for organ function, heart, lungs, etc. You know, doing that little job of keeping you alive. Your basal metabolic rate, also referred to as resting energy expenditure, isn't something that you can manipulate on a day-to-day -day basis. It is primarily dictated by body composition. If you gain a lot of weight, your body will require more energy to maintain that weight than it does now. Likewise, if you lose a lot of weight, your body will require fewer calories than it does now, which allows us to smoothly transition into our first metabolism misconception. Lots of people freak out about the idea of your metabolism decreasing when you lose weight, but a large chunk of that is totally fucking expected. Here is an estimated basal metabolic rate figure for a 34-year-old, 6-foot-tall, 100-kilogram male. If we reduce that hypothetical weight by 10 kilograms, you can see that this human now requires less energy than they did before. If your only goal is to have your metabolic rate as high as possible, gain weight. Don't diet. Metabolic adaptation is where things get a little bit more complicated. Hypothetically, if our 100 kilogram human dieted down to 80 kilograms, it is possible that their new metabolic rate resembles someone who weighs 75 kilograms. And this five kilogram discrepancy is metabolic adaptation or adaptive thermogenesis. It is when reductions to your metabolic rate supersede the reductions you would expect based off your change in body weight alone. Lots of studies look at this, but there are two that you are most likely to see people talk about, probably because they are the most most extreme, so they make fucking great headlines. Imagine a big bag of cherries. All of them are slightly different shapes and sizes, except two of them, which are much bigger and juicier than all the others. Well, lots of people like hand selecting those two specific cherries without letting you see the rest. Big cherry number one, the Minnesota starvation experiment. Subjects who were already lean had their calorie intake pretty much cut in half to test the effects of semi-starvation during the war. In this extreme trial, subjects lost a quarter of their body weight and their rest energy expenditure decreased by around 39% or 600 calories per day. Big cherry number two, the biggest loser trial. The biggest loser is a televised weight loss contest with a big financial incentive, which basically means that contestants worked their bollocks off in a publicly glorified crash diet. On average, subjects lost nearly 40% of their body weight in just a 30 week period. Yes, that is nearly 60 kilograms in 30 weeks. As contestants lost a lot of weight, their resting metabolic rate obviously declined, but it was estimated that an additional 500 calories worth of metabolic adaptation was seen on top of that. This figure was later corrected to an estimated 370 calories worth of metabolic adaptation. Not only that, but in a follow-up study six years later, there was an average weight regain of 41 kilograms of the original 58 kilograms, and despite this, an estimated 500 calories per day of metabolic adaptation was seen. Let's not show sugarcoat this, that fucking sucks. If you had maintained a weight loss of 15 to 20 kilograms and you found out that not only was your resting metabolic rate lower, but it was an estimated 500 calories per day lower than you would expect, that would be a massive fucking buzzkill. Now this is where some people would swoop in with a sales pitch to try and convince you that their revolutionary diet plan will stop your metabolism from plummeting to the floor. But there are a couple of really big things that fuck nuggets like this often gloss over. Despite the Minnesota starvation experiment and the Biggest Loser trial painting quite a bleak picture for long-term weight loss, many other trials came to very different conclusions. One study was super fucking meticulous and allowed us to look at things with a level of detail that we haven't before. It found that total energy expenditure was reduced in participants who had lost weight. However, this didn't actually come from resting energy expenditure. Primarily, it came from non-resting energy expenditure. This suggests that people who had lost weight hadn't smashed their metabolism into a million pieces, but maybe there's a tendency for people who have lost weight to just move around less. Another study looked at people who had lost weight and found 
found that although some people did have lower and some people had higher resting metabolic rates, on average there was no consistent evidence of metabolic adaptation at all. Which leads us neatly onto the second biggest thing that a lot of people might neglect to tell you. Although this sounds really counterintuitive, metabolic adaptation doesn't actually predict weight regain. In fact, in this last study, the degree of metabolic adaptation actually correlated with the degree of weight loss. Likewise, in the Biggest Loser trial, the participants that had the highest amount of metabolic adaptation were the ones who had lost the most weight. Now I know what you might be thinking, surely metabolic adaptation is a bad thing, so how the fuck does that work? Well, here is an extra level of complexity which explains why this is so complicated. Body weight is super easy to measure. Get a group of people to step on the scales before and after a diet, or even every single day if you want to, and bish bash bosh, suddenly you have a fuckload of data. Sure, there are things that can skew that data, like whether you've taken your morning shit or not, but overall there are ways to control for that. But resting metabolic rate isn't like that, it is a very finicky process that normally is tested irregularly regularly, like solely before and after a diet. And it can be thrown off by many things, and one big one is energy balance. I.e. if someone's weight is going up or down at the time of measurement, it can skew the result. One study recently found that if they tested participants' resting metabolic rate when they were weight stabilised, the apparent degree of metabolic adaptation was cut in half. So the large degree of metabolic adaptation in older trials may be just because of the way it was tested. Or it may be because metabolic adaptation in those particular trials was measured in response to a particularly extreme weight loss intervention. So what are the super simplified cliff notes? Yes, your metabolic rate is likely to decline if you lose a lot of weight, and at least a large chunk of that is totally normal. There may be a degree of metabolic adaptation on top of that. Although this isn't ideal, it is far from an insurmountable barrier to long-term weight loss. So much so that some studies have actually called out that particular narrative. Many studies have shown that the degree of metabolic metabolic adaptation weirdly correlates with the amount of weight that someone loses, and it doesn't predict weight relapse. So, be careful of anyone who talks about metabolic adaptation and only mentions one or two studies. It is a big topic which is super easy to accidentally trip over, but it's also a very easy topic to scare the shit out of people with, and then use that as a platform for selling your own services.